I really regret buying my MacBook Pro two months ago. So obviously Apple Silicon is here. Apple just came out with the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, and Mac Mini that all have the new M1 chip. So first of all, Apple has been using Intel processors since 2005. Intel processors use the x86 architecture and then the new M1 chips use ARM technology. So a lot of this stuff kind of went over my head, but really you just need to know that ARM is designed for mobile devices. So these are the chips that Apple would use in their iPhones and iPads. And usually you're able to have a longer battery life with these chips. So what comes with all of these added features of having the N1 chip and why is it such a big deal? So a phrase that really kind of put it together succinctly to explain why the M1 chip is a big deal is, high performance and high efficiency. So what they mean by this is that your computer is literally going to be faster. You're going to be able to render images quicker. You're going to be able to edit videos quicker. Everything is going to be working a lot more seamlessly and you really probably won't face that much lag with these new laptops. And then on the other side, your battery life is going to be insane. So obviously, like I mentioned, we're going to have improved performance and power efficiency, more detailed images, and then the system's also going to be more responsive. So if you've ever edited on say iMovie or Final Cut Pro on your MacBook and it is just lagging, things are not being dragged in the right places, and it's just a big struggle, apparently the M1 chip is supposed to really get rid of that and it's going to be you're gonna be able to use your laptop very seamlessly. So I also saw that it is designed to excel at machine learning. So I'm not really sure if the MacBook Air is actually gonna be able to handle machine learning, but they are claiming that it can. But I remember when I was in college in my machine learning classes, my laptop would be wheezing because it quite literally just couldn't handle running all of these, uh, um, running all of these algorithms for like hours at a time. So we'll see. And then next, there's also going to be advanced security. So they said that there's going to be automatic high performance encryption for all your files. And then finally, really the main thing about the M1 chip that kind of sets it apart, as I mentioned in the beginning, is the battery life. So you're going to have a lot of improved battery life. So with the Pro, the 2021 that I just bought two months ago, I currently have about 10 hours of video. If I watch videos for 10 hours straight, my battery life should be fine. But now with the new M1 chip, I can watch videos for 20 hours and the battery should be fine. The M1 chip, Apple Silicon, with this chip is literally doubling the battery life, which to me, when I read that, I was like, I, I really regret buying my laptop. I, did, I honestly wasn't expecting it to be anything spectacular, but I was like, wow, that is such an improvement. Of course, all of these things are what Apple is saying. So we don't really know until people get the laptops and they're actually able to do test, uh, performance tests and test all the benchmarks and see what exactly is the battery life like, see what exactly the processing is like. So of course, these are all the things that Apple claims, but you know, these are still pretty amazing claims. That is really the main point of it. Just the fact that the M1 chip was it's an ARM chip, which is usually used in phones. So with phones, you're able to have better battery life with better performance. And that's what they're putting into their laptop. If you uh, saw the keynote, basically now you're going to be able to use iOS apps on your laptop. So when a software developer is developing an app, usually if you're developing a mobile app, or excuse me, usually for developing an app, you have to either develop a mobile app or a desktop app. You can't typically develop them together, I don't believe. You have to develop them separately. But with this, apparently people are going to be able to just make a couple of adjustments and then you're gonna be able to have a desktop app for your mobile app. So this is really gonna change the game. I think it's gonna change the game for how the app store looks like and what kind of apps are gonna be out there. And I'm really excited to see what happens. Next for why this is also a big deal is that this is gonna get people into the Apple ecosystem and have people stay there. So like I just said, software developers are now going to be able to develop mobile and desktop applications pretty seamlessly from what it sounds like. So all those iPhone apps that you really like using on your phone, you're gonna be able to use on your MacBook. So people are going to be more inclined to have a MacBook if they can use their iPhone apps on their MacBook. Next, this is a rumor that I saw, but apparently we might be getting a touch screen in the future. So I, I don't know if this was a lie, but I, I feel like I remember reading like the Steve Jobs book and him saying that like touchscreen laptops were just not it or touch, like it just it was never gonna happen. There was this image that was on the app store, on the Mac app store, and 
it had somebody who was touching a screen and this guy tweeted it out and was like, are we getting touchscreen laptops sometime in the future? And then Apple very quickly deleted the image of the guy touching the screen and everyone was like, oh, we'll see. So I actually think that would be pretty awesome. I have a Microsoft Surface Laptop 3 and that is touchscreen and it's a pretty great feature. I really like it. And I think if Apple came out with something that was similar to the Surface Pro where you're able to um, use it as like a laptop and a um, tablet, that would be like outstanding. <laughs> I think that would be amazing. Basically having the iPad Pro like actually work as a MacBook, that would be fantastic. So if Apple is working on something like that, so lastly, this is a big deal for Apple. This means that Apple is literally owning their entire development process of their laptop from the, you know, processor all the way to the body that you see, all the way to the OS that you have. It is owning every single thing. So I think this is a huge and gigantic big deal for Apple. And as you guys know, I'm a pretty tough critic of Apple products. Um, you know, people really don't like how tough of a critic I am just because I don't think Apple has done anything innovative in a while, um, come for me. But in this moment, I do actually think that the M1 chip is something that's really innovative and something that I can definitely see a pretty big impact, um, it having a pretty big impact on in the future. I can really see where they are going with the M1 chip. And I'm honestly pretty excited about it. In the beginning, you heard me say that I regret buying my MacBook and I'm not even kidding. When I was reading, I couldn't watch the keynote, so I just kind of read updates about it. And when I was reading about what the newest MacBook Pro came with, I literally Googled like how much my new MacBook would sell for and try to see if I could, you know, just maybe be out of like $200 for this laptop and buy the newest MacBook. And I was like, I was so ready to do it. So I started to sell my new MacBook because I thought it was that amazing. Um, obviously I'm not gonna sell my laptop. Um, I wish I could, but I think it would be like, the difference in money would just be way too much. And obviously there are some pretty spectacular differences in my opinion, uh, between the 2020 uh, Intel MacBook Pro and the 2020 M1 Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, but I'm gonna be keeping my laptop. Unfortunately, I really wish I had waited two months, but you know what? You live and you learn. So that's it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye guys.